So let's talk about rational functions. So a rational function means a fraction of two polynomial functions. And one might not look like a polynomial, but it is. It's a polynomial degree 0. Okay, so 1 over x. This is one of our basic forms. Okay, kind of like x squared has a basic shape, and then we can build a whole bunch of other parabolas off of it. 1 over x has a basic shape, and then we can build a whole bunch of other functions off of it. So 1 over x looks like this, and, and I'll do a little analysis after we get the graph. So this one here lives in quadrants 1 and 3, and it just kind of has this swoopy feel, and that's going to be close to my x-axis over there, but not touching. And then the same thing over here in quadrant 3. Okay, So now let's talk about that. Well. If I have 1 divided by x, 1 is positive, right? So my y values will have the same sign as whatever my x values are, right? So if my x's are positive, my y's are positive as well, because 1 divided by positive is positive. Likewise, over here, if my x's are negative, 1 divided by a negative number would give me a negative number. So my y's, right, my f of x values would be negative when my x is negative. Okay, so far that makes sense. And now let's talk about the shape of our graph. So in here, close to my y-axis, when I have really small x values, okay, fractions, 1 divided by 1 half, for instance, would be 2. Okay? 1 divided by 1 half, so when x is 1 half, so if I make this be 1, if this is 1 half, x divided by 1 half is 2 x divided by 1 tenth is 10, right? And the closer I get in here to my y-axis, the smaller my x's are. So 1 divided by a really small number is a really big number. And then if I head out this way, so now let's say I have really big x's, like 10. Okay, it's not really big, but pretend it's big. So when x is 10, my y value would be 1 tenth. Okay, so that would be right, a small number. So as x gets big, y gets small. And as x gets small, y gets big. If you remember your variation talks, this is an inverse right, variation. As one gets big, the other gets small, and vice versa. Okay. All right. So here's one of our basic shapes, 1 over x. Another basic shape is called 1 over x squared. Okay. So for this function, it looks like a volcano. Okay, and it continues on. I put arrowheads all around because it continues on in all directions. Okay. So again, our discussion about signs. In this case, 1 is positive, x squared always positive, because I'm squaring it. So my y values will always be positive. And let's see, same talk as my x's get small in here near the y-axis. Right, my y values get super big. Very good. OK, so now let's, I'm going to scroll back down. Let's talk about my 1 over x, and let's discuss the domain the range, is it odd or even? And, oh dear, asymptotes. We're going to have to talk about asymptotes. We'll talk about that over here. Asymptotes. OK, domain. What kind of x values are you allowed to plug in to this rational function? Okay. And it is anything that doesn't cause division by 0. So for this, right, division by 0 happens when x itself is 0. So anything else, right, any other number can go in here for the x, everything but 0. So one way you can write that is negative infinity to 0, parenthesis means don't include it, and then start again at 0 and go to infinity. The range, now we're talking about what kind of y values can we get out. Well, we have some positive ones and we have some negative ones. I can see that from my graph. Do we get 0? 
do we ever cross this x-axis? Is there an x-value I can plug in here that'll make my y-value zero? Nope, there is not. There's nothing you can do, right? There's nothing you can divide one by to get a zero out. So the range is the same, negative infinity to zero, and then zero to infinity again. Parentheses on both those zeros, so they are not included. Now, odd or even, and it's easiest to check with symmetry. Remember, odd symmetry is a rotational symmetry. If I spin this 180 degrees, does my graph match up? Indeed, it does. So that's an odd function. Okay. Asymptotes. Asymptote is, it's a definition, if you don't know what an asymptote is yet, it's a line, a graph, gets closer and closer to. Okay. So approaches um, infinitely close. How about that? So my 1 over x function has a couple of asymptotes, right? Out here, we would call this a horizontal asymptote. So it has the x-axis as a horizontal asymptote as x gets really big. And here, right, the y-axis is our vertical asymptote. That happens when my y values get really big. All right, so let's see if we can have that same discussion with our 1 over x squared. Okay. Domain, range, odd or even, and any asymptotes. So domain, what x's can we plug in? Right. So when we're talking about rational functions, the domain is really a function of exclusion. We need to exclude anything that causes division by 0. Yep, so we just exclude that x equals 0 one more time. So negative infinity to 0, 0 to infinity. What about the range? What kind of y values do we get out? Yeah, this time we don't get the negative ones out because everybody here is positive. So it's just from 0 to infinity. Okay, yes, my infinities are getting worse. There we go. So how about odd or even? Is there any symmetry there? All right, so it looks like we have some y-axis symmetry, and that corresponds to an even function. And lastly, asymptotes. Do we have any? Absolutely, right? There's our horizontal asymptote, the x-axis again. And the y-axis, the positive y-axis, in fact, is our vertical asymptote. All right, so we can also shift these rational functions. So we can take these two favorite graphs, and we can do some shift, shifts and flips on them. So 1 over x minus 1 plus 3. How would I sketch that? What does that minus 1 down here with the x do for me? Exactly. It's going to take my favorite 1 over x graph and shift it right 1. The plus 3 then shifts it up 3 units. So I'm going to take that same basic shift. And the easiest way to shift rational functions is by shifting the asymptotes. So my, if I shift my graph right 1, that's going to shift that vertical asymptote right 1. And up 3 is going to shift my horizontal asymptote up 3. And asymptotes we usually draw in with dotted lines. Asymptotes get dashed lines. And then that's it. I would just draw my graph in here to fit in the asymptote. Oh, gosh. Okay, let's do a little quick um, y-intercept, at least, to figure out where we're going to hit. So 0, negative 1, plus 3, 2. Okay, there's that guy. 
So you might be asking, how do we know it doesn't cross over that vertical asymptote at x equals 1? Well, why can't it? Why can't I have a value here that it crosses over this line? Exactly, because that would cause division by 0. If I ever tried to get through x equals 1, it would cause division by 0, and my whole function would blow up. Okay, so domain range, tell you what, convince yourselves that the domain goes from negative infinity to 1 and from 1 to infinity, and then the range does the same thing but up to 3. I'm not odd or even, I have no symmetry with respect to the y-axis or the origin but my asymptotes, and I'm going to abbreviate here, so horizontal asymptote and vertical asymptote. What are those equations? Okay, so horizontal asymptote, that's this one here. How about I write the equation of that line? Yep, so a horizontal lines are y equals, and in this case y equals 3. Vertical asymptote, right, up and down. Vertical lines have the equation x equals, and in this case x equals 1. Okay. And now lastly, flipped rational functions. Oh, and shifted. Flipped and shifted. Here we go. So now my basic graph is a 1 over x squared, because I'm squaring it here. I have a negative sign right there, so let's think about that. My denominator, whatever happens inside here, I'm going to square it. So my denominator is always a positive number. But I have in the numerator a negative number. There's nothing I can do about that. So I have, for my y values, a negative divided by a positive. So all of my y values are going to be negative. That tells me my graph lives down here below the x-axis. Okay. And I have an x plus 2 squared, so a plus 2 in with the x. Right, in with the x shifts left and right. Pluses shift left. So I would take my volcano. So a 1 over x squared is a volcano. Basic shape. Negative. So now we're flipped over the x-axis. And we're shifted left to. There's my asymptote that got shifted. I'm not shifted up or down, so I didn't change my horizontal asymptote. Oh dear, pretend like those are a little bit more symmetric with respect to each other. Okay, so really bad graph, but you get the idea. Imagine that it's more like this living over here. Okay, and if you had to find a y-intercept, could we do that? So 0, 1 for the x. 1, negative 1 over one, 4, so one, negative 1 fourth, so pretend that's negative 1 fourth. Uh, horizontal asymptote, it is still my x-axis, and if you want the equation of that, it's y equals 0. And my vertical asymptote, equation of that vertical line, x equals negative 2.